We bless the Lord for today. We are 12 days away from Christmas. So it's right at the door. Amen. And so everywhere you go now, maybe in the malls, you're hearing Christmas songs. Um, on your radio, you're hearing Christmas songs. On the TV, you're seeing the commercial. And so we all know what the time is about. And Christmas is about the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so this morning, we're going to talk about no other person than Jesus. However, as you know, a lot of people celebrate what they don't know. And so it is just a celebration. And unfortunately, uh, it is possible also for a believer to celebrate the Christmas without knowing the person of Jesus as well as they should. Praise the Lord. And, and so in the text we read, we read about the narrative of the birth of Jesus. But I'm not going to dwell on the birth of Jesus uh, story this morning. I want to talk about Jesus himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, so turn your scriptures with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. We're going to read a few verses there. Matthew tells us about the earthly birth of Jesus. The story of the mother, of the father, of the angel's visit, and the time he was born. Luke tells us the same thing. But John doesn't tell us that. John tells us about the everlasting history of Jesus. And so we want to take it farther back than Bethlehem and Nazareth and Judea. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. If you're there, it goes, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning, verse 2, with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. We're going to pause right there. In the beginning was the Word. Now, that alone already tells us that at the beginning, something was existing. Now, if you think about that, when something is beginning, that's when you're going to just start the existence of that thing. But this verse says, in the beginning, something was already in existence. In the beginning was the word. Praise the Lord. Beginning of what? In the beginning of the world, at the beginning of the universe and time and history, before that started, something was already in existence. In fact, the Greek tense for this was imperfect, past imperfect. So it's not that uh, Jesus began at the beginning. He was already existing before anything began. And so by the time beginning started, he was already in existence. And what was that thing? The word. Hallelujah. It's not in the beginning God created the word. But in the beginning was the word. So that means before you were made, the word was existing. Before our parents, our great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents, before the first human being came into the place called earth, there was something called the word existing. The sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, before they ever were created, at the beginning of everything, the word was already existing. Before the, before the first sound was ever made. Now, why am I picking on sound? Now, you hear sound because what is called sound waves reach your eardrums. And sound waves are just, you know, sound particles that move through the air and they make waves and then they hit your eardrums, they cause vibration, and you can hear a word. But listen, before there was the air particles, before there was the sound waves, before there was any eardrum to hear any sound, was the word. That means this word must not be the word of human being. Before, because before you can even hear the sound of a human being, there was the word. Before a mouth to speak a word was created, there was the word. Then definitely this word is not the word of a human being. Because it was existing before the mouth that speaks. And the sound, that carry, the sound waves that carry sound was made. The word was already existing. Praise the Lord. 
And the word was with God. Verse 1b. This is the coexistence of the word with God. When it says in the beginning was the word, before anything was made, that is the pre-existence of the word before anything was made. Before the first atom was made, the word pre-existed. But the word was not existing by himself. The word existed uh, with God. And the word was with God. Now, how long has God been existing? I want you to think about it. It's a simple answer. From eternity. Because God created time. In order for God to create time, it must exist before time. It's simple logic. If I'm going to create something that I pre-existed that thing. God had existed from eternity when there is no time. Now, if this word that was with God existed with God, it kind of means that word also is eternal. Because the word was around before time was made. When you say how long has something been existing, you're talking about time. I was born in 1930 or 1940 or 19... You are, you're talking about time. Therefore, I am 80 years old or 50 years old because there was time that you are measuring by. But what happened when there was no time to measure by? That's when God existed eternally. So the word that existed with God and was not created in time also is eternal. Praise God. Just like God is eternal. Now, it's not only that the word was with God. This is the interesting part. And the word was God. Can we read that together? And what? And the word was God. The deity of the word. The word was God. Now, let's think about it. So far, we have been told about two entities. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is the first entity. And the Word was with God. That's the second person mentioned. God. So we have two entities. But now we have been told that those two entities, they are both God. And you say, okay, all right. I thought the Word was, you know, just picture in your mind. Let's say the Word was something you could see. And God... You could see him, just a picture. So here is God, here is the word. I get that. But now when you say the word is God, then I'm confused. Because I thought the word was beside God. Now, let's look into it. There are two entities, the word and God. Because they are two entities in form. In manifestation but there is just one they are both the same in essence in substance you have one essence in two forms and I'm going to explain the word himself is God in his being in his nature when you say essence Essence just means the basic nature of something. What something consists of. Not necessarily the form it's in, but what is the element that make up that something. For example, now this is not a perfect illustration, and you have to know that. There is nothing that can perfectly illustrate what I'm talking about. God the, the, the Word and God the, the, the Father. But this can give us an idea. I'm talking about what the verse is saying is that there are two entities, but they have one essence. Think about water. What is water? Just the basic chemical makeup of water. H2O. Everybody get that? Two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen. That is the essence, the substance of water. But water exists in how many forms, at least that we know for now? Three. Liquid is water. Solid 
like your ice blocks, gas, like your steam. But what is the essence of each of them? H2O. Gas doesn't have H2O2. That's something else. Praise the Lord. So you see that whether it's liquid or solid or gas, the essence is two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen. But it exists in different forms, but it's still the same essence. Are you getting it? So when the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, it's telling you that, yes, the Word was God, but He also existed in the format, in the form of the spoken Word alongside with the father who spoke the word. Are you listening to me? So, what we see here is that we have one God in two personalities or in two forms. Later on, we're going to learn in the scriptures that actually there is a third person in the Trinity who is the Holy Spirit. Now, if one is not careful, you can begin to think in your mind because sometimes it's hard to wrap our mind around these things and you can easily begin to think there are two gods but there is one God. Anything outside of H2O is not water. It is some other compound or element. Praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? The Bible teaches us very clearly that there is one God. So here you learn that this word is God. God the Father that spoke the word is God. Now, let's look at some scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 8. See what God says here. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 8. This is God speaking and God is saying, it's just one God. Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declare it? You are my witness. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock I know not of one. So God himself, God says, there is no second God beside me. I am just the one and only God. Why am I sharing this with you? To let you know that when John chapter 1 says there is the word and the word was God, he's not saying there are two gods. Because God himself said, there is no other God. I am just the only one. So this word is 100% God. There are not two gods. Notice John chapter 1 doesn't say, um, and the word was a God. No, the word was God. Even demons know that there is only one God. Look at this, James chapter 2 verse 19. James chapter 2 verse 19. As a believer, you must not be confused. Jesus is not a lesser God or a second God. Demons understand this. This is what the Bible says. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even demons believe and they tremble. Even demons know that there is only one God. So, we are on to something here. If there is only one God and the word was God, and also God the Father was there. This word must be 100% God. Because God the Father says, there's no other God beside me, it's just me. Are you listening to me? That means G, the word is not a second God. It's not a smaller God. It's just the second person of the same God. That's the one that is in the beginning. It may be difficult for the mind to comprehend, but we're talking about God. So we have to understand that talking about God will be, will be greater than the human being can put into your mathematical equation and work out. Are you listening to me? Now, not only is this word God, this 
this God word, the Bible says, all things were made through him. Verse 3. All things were made through him. Through this word. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Wow. The creation agency of the word. Not only was the word pre-existing before the word, world, not only was the word God, in fact, everything was made through the word. Hallelujah. I want you to note a few things in this verse. All things. And the next word is nothing. Anytime you hear all or nothing, you're talking about absolute, universal. There's nothing outside all. Once you say all except this, then it's not all. When you say nothing, nothing means nothing. Zilch. Everything that exists in this world and in any place that there is an existence was made through the world. All physical matters that you can see and touch was made through the word. The spiritual realities that you cannot see or touch was made through the word. All natural laws in the universe, all scientific laws, all the stars, all the planets, all the galaxies, even things beyond what we know exist was made through the word. Wow. In fact, look at Psalm 33, verse 6. Let's look at what this passage tells us. Psalm 33, verse 6. It goes, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By what? The word. So, perhaps you think, maybe John exaggerated. Maybe John uh, is ascribing too much to this word. No, 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 no. David said, Hundreds of years before John. Yeah, no, no. That guy is right. By the word of Yahweh, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So all the stars and all the billions of galaxies and the trillions. In fact, I, I read somewhere while preparing for this that they are estimate, because science doesn't really know for now, about a billion trillion stars. Because there are billions of galaxies and an estimate based on Mars shows, on Milky Way, shows that there is about a hundred uh, uh, bi billion stars in each galaxy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, these are numbers that your mind, you cannot wrap it around. A hundred, a, 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 a hundred billion trillion or a billion trillion is one times 10 raised to the power 29. One with 29 zeros. The Bible says every single one of those was made by the word. Are you listening to me? It's beyond your mind. So, you are not the only one made by the word. <laughs> Even the angels were made by the word. Are you listening to me? Now, the second thing, besides all and nothing, is through him. Now, this becomes important. Through him. Yeah, we know it's through him. But all of a sudden, the word becomes him. When you talk about word, you, I mean, it's a non-living thing. Normally, you say, oh, the word you spoke. You will use it. But the word is a person. We already know that. Because the word was God. So this word we're talking about is a person. We have been told that. And this person was the one through whom all things were made. You know what this means? The universe did not come together by a random force or energy or chance. The universe was created by a personal being. That's what it means. So, when, when, when you know, scientists that uh, 
they are yet to reconcile reality with their dream world. Say, well, the world just came to existence again, a theory by some kind of explosion or something. The Bible says no. It's their mind that is not thinking as great as those minds are. The everything you see was made by a personal being through him. Hallelujah. From the angle of the axis of the earth to the DNA in your cell was by design. In fact, um, I don't know if you know, but the human DNA is so complex, it's very similar to, you know, computer uh, program. Not just a simple computer program. Intricate computer program. That's how the DNA in the human body is. Um, th there's this article on, the, uh, on everystudent.com. You could check it out. It says, British philosopher Dr. Anthony Flew was a leading spokesperson for atheism. That means those that don't believe there is God. Actively involved in debate after debate to prove that there is no God. You know how many scientists have lost their mind? However, scientific discoveries within the last 30 years brought him to a conclusion he could not avoid. In a video interview in December 2004, he stated, Super intelligence is the only good explanation for the origin of life and the complexity of nature. Oh, he's just coming to the conclusion the Bible already reached 2,000 years ago. Super intelligence. You don't have a computer without an intelligent person putting it together. When they realize just the complexity of the DNA of human being alone, they say, well, okay, I concur. This cannot be by a random chance. Now, if you look at the, the picture of the a computer program, you have zeros and ones and zeros arranged in some orders. Look at the picture of the human DNA. You also have letters. Uh, you have you know, chemicals that are represented with letters T, G, and C arranged in similar fashion. But the thing about this, this is that it is the exact order of this chemical arrangement in your DNA that instructs your cells what to do. What is amazing is I found out in this article that the tiny space in your cell, in human being cell, all right, as small as they are, when you stretch out the DNA code there, it's about three billion letters long in one cell. You know how many cells are estimated to be in the human body? About 37.2 trillion cells are inside of you as you're sitting. And each of them has the DNA code that is about 3 billion letters long. Every one of those cells was made by the word. Now, so just multiply <laughs> the number of cells in this room and by the DNA in each cell. The Bible says the word made every one of them by design. 99.9% .9 of human DNA is similar. 99.9 percent .9 the only thing that makes you different and makes you look the unique you way you look is just the arrangement of the letters in the dna and you tell me that just happened because some gas blew up that person must be out of their mind the word made everything the bible says hallelujah so, since this word is a person, who is the word? We know he's God. Praise the Lord. We know he's the agent of creation. Let's just fast forward to verse 14, John chapter 1. It tells us very clearly who the word is, as you may already know. Verse 14, chapter 1, John. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, who do you know that became flesh and was the Son of God? They don't have two names. Jesus. That's the word we've been talking about. 
and the word took on another form became that means what it wasn't it became in the beginning it was but now at one point in history the word became flesh and dwelt among human beings and we saw his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father jesus is that word so when you understand who jesus is then you understand that jesus is not just the baby that was born somewhere two thousand years ago oh no 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 jesus is the one that creates every strand of the hair on your head that's who jesus is are you listening to me jesus existed before the universe was created because the word existed from the word, Jesus coexisted with God the Father from eternity. Jesus didn't come through Mary. Praise the Lord. Jesus is God because the word is God. That's who Jesus is. Hallelujah. So what we, what we understand then is that God the Father created the entire creation through God the Son, Jesus Christ. Everything the Father created was through the Son, Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah in the house, hallelujah. That's the Jesus that we call. See, it's important to know the Jesus that we serve. That's why I said at the beginning that too many people celebrate Christmas, but they, don't, they have no clue the person they are celebrating. Oh, it's one guy that was born 2,000 years ago. If that's all you know about Jesus, you are grossly misleading. Praise the Lord. This Jesus is the same God because God says, I am only one. Did you know that Jesus is God? Did you know that Jesus is not a God? Did you know that Jesus is not the second God? There's nothing like that. He doesn't exist. He's one God. He's the second person of the same God, the creator of heaven and earth. That's the Jesus you call. Every time you say in the name of Jesus, you are calling the name of God, your maker himself. Let's look at passages that confirm to us beyond John chapter 1 that Jesus is God. First of all, start with his name. His name means God. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. We read it earlier. Behold, the virgin shall be, be with the child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated, what does it mean? God with man. Did you see that? That's the meaning of his name. Emmanuel. God, not an angel with man. God who came to dwell with man. From the name of Jesus already, you know that he's saying, I am God that just appear as man and dwell with man. The Old Testament called Jesus God. All through the Old Testament. Let's just look at a few scriptures. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. What does it say? For unto us a child is born. You know this verse. Unto us a son is given, and what? The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called? Uh-huh. Next word, after wonderful. And the next one? Uh-oh. That's his name. Mighty God. In fact, everlasting father, prince of peace. Jesus himself said that he was God. Not just the Old Testament. Jesus himself said, I am God. John chapter 14, verse 7 to 9. If you had known me, this is, you know, Philip. In this passage, Philip said something to Jesus. He said, well, show us the Father, and he will be sufficient for us. We want to really see the Father. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you had known, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me? Philip, he who has seen me has what? Seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? 
Do you know too many Christians are like Philip? They say, this is Jesus, but there is a greater father behind him. Jesus said, really? He's not saying, I'm so much like the father that if you have seen me, you have seen the father. That's not what he's saying. If you have seen me, you have seen the father in the form of man. Jesus said, I am the father in man. I am God the son. The second person of the Trinity. How big Jesus is. <laughs> How big Jesus is. Never ever you compare Jesus and say, well, I'm just following Jesus and he's following Buddha. There's no such thing. Jesus is not just one of those great teachers. It means that person is yet to know who Jesus is. John chapter 10 verse 30. Jesus says, I and my father are. When was the last time you used are for one? If you use it grammatically, <laughs> it's incorrect. Can you say, well, these two people are one? Well, if they are two, then they are two. And Jesus is not saying we agree. We are one. I am God as God the Father is God. Because there is only one God. Shout hallelujah in the house. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. Jesus speaking of himself. I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. Says the Lord. Who is, who was, and who is to come. The Almighty. How many Almighty do you have? One. Give the Lord a hand in the house. The Jews in the days of Jesus knew that he claimed to be God. They knew it. Look at it. John chapter 5 verse 17 to 18. This is Jesus. My father has been working until now and I have been working. Therefore, Jews, the Jews sought to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. The Jews knew that this man is claiming to be God. That's why they hated him. They understood clearly what Jesus meant. There was no misunderstanding about what Jesus claimed. John chapter 10 verse 33. The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy because you, being a man, make yourself God. Angels worshipped him as well. You know, angels can never worship any other being than God. But angels worship them. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God do what? You think God will loan his angels to worship somebody else? You think so? No. So you know what? It's not only human beings that worship Jesus. The angels in heaven worship Jesus. So the person that fails to worship Jesus, I don't know where he belongs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Angels of God worship him. Now, this is the bigger one. God the Father himself called God the Son God. Now, it doesn't get any better than that. If God the Father says, this is God, then Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. This is God speaking. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. But to the son he says, this is God, the he. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. God, the father, says of the son, your throne, O God. You say, well, how is it possible then that God, the father, is speaking to the son because they are, they are the same? It doesn't make sense. Don't forget, two persons, but one essence. In essence, Jesus is God. In persons, Jesus is the Son, and God the Father is the Father. If you say, well, I get it, you probably didn't, because you cannot get it. That's the truth. <laughs> now, you say, Pastor, how are you going to preach something you say, I cannot understand? Because nobody can. In persons, there are two persons. But in essence, is one 
essence. So, when you look at it this way, there is this popular triangle that is used for, I'm talking about God the Son. Don't, remember, don't forget God the Holy Ghost is there. So, if you think, you know, God the Father here, God the Son here, God the Holy Spirit here. God the Father in person is not God the Son. The Father exists, the Son exists. God the Son, the person is not God the Holy Spirit. But all three of them are God. And is one God. So, so when Jesus is saying Father, Jesus is not praying to himself. He is praying to God the Father, but he is God the Son. And he's not the second God. Hallelujah. Other New Testament scriptures that I want to show as I move to the end of this. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in him, Jesus, dwells all the fullness of Godhead bodily. There is nothing that is in God that is not in Jesus. Everything that God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is, is inside of Jesus in the body. Wow. That's who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The last verse I want to show you on this is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. We ought to know the Jesus that we call. Otherwise, we will misunderstand completely who he is. And it will be to a great disadvantage. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. That's why I say you cannot understand it because it's called mystery. What is the mystery? God was manifested in the flesh. That's who Jesus is. Justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among all. That is believed on in the world and received up in glory. That's who Jesus is. God manifested in the flesh. That's the Lord that we serve. So all of this, what does it mean? For you and for me. This is where I'm bringing all of this to. It means that you don't serve Jesus or do him, you don't do Jesus a favor by serving him because he's your creator. Oh, I'm going to go serve that Jesus so he doesn't get upset. There's nothing like that. He made you. Praise the Lord. I will call his name so he won't get upset that I call some other name. He created you. That's what all this means. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. That is why when the, the, the three wise men came, they worshipped the baby. Because they know this is not a baby. This is God. Are you listening to me? They worshipped him. You know, when was the last time you went to go greet somebody that had a baby and you start bowing down to the baby? They probably will run you out of the house because something is wrong with your head. But the wise men came from the east all the way because they know that this child created us. It means that Jesus knows everything about you. Each one of the 37.2 7, million or trillion cells in your body, he put them there. That's what it means because he's the creator. It means that he knows everything about the universe. He knows everything about your life, about your situation, about every event. He knows everything about everything because nothing was created apart from him. That's what it means about Jesus. The Bible says, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Jesus. So you and I, we had better give all of our life to Jesus. That's what it means. It means that we should trust him completely. You must trust him completely. Don't second guess Jesus. Whatever you find in this word that Jesus says, that's God speaking to you. Don't say that's the opinion of a man called Jesus. It means that don't have other gods alongside of the only one God, Jesus. There are many who that have Jesus, but they still have some other mini gods that they, they go back to after they go to Jesus. If you recognize that this Jesus is the only way, is the only life, is the only truth, is God himself, don't tag along some other gods that you are going to consult along with God, Jesus. 
Don't serve Jesus part-time. You're serving your creator part-time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. When I have some time, I'll give it to Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus says your days, your lifespan, everything, I made it and I determined it. Who else can you serve but me? Don't serve Jesus part time. Don't give half of your life to Jesus. Don't give half of your possession to Jesus. Don't give half your dreams and things to Jesus. Because this very Jesus is the God that made you. If you understand who he is, that's what it means. It means seek him and know him very well because that's your creator. That's Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will open the eyes of our understanding to know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet.